This guy is Moog, Lord of Blood, aka the one-eyed, child-loving, brother-cheek-clapping demigod responsible for many a joke since Elden Ring's release over two years ago. And in that time period, this topic has been talked about a lot. But in true From Software fashion, there's a lot that people have missed. And in today's video, my goal is to help you understand all the hidden secrets of the Moguin dynasty and the disturbing love story that is Moog and Mikula. Also, later in the video, we're gonna be talking about a secret to do with this that has really heavy implications for the DLC that I have not seen talked about anywhere. So if you like the sound of that, make sure to stick around and find out. I do just wanna say before I get any further into this, I did have an operation about a day and a half, two days ago, and I only got out of hospital yesterday. So if I sound a bit groggy or the quality of the video isn't as good as usual, I am really sorry for that. I will try my best, of course. But if there are any discrepancies in the video, that's why, and I really am sorry. The first secret I have for you today is the fact that Moog and Mikula's relationship is actually consensual. I know a lot of people have said that he just abducted him in the middle of the night and did some freaky shit to him, which I'm sure this was some freaky shit going down. But personally, I'm 100% convinced that this was on both ends. My reasoning for believing this is in the DLC trailer, a lot of information is given to us that suggests Mikula is fully conscious that he's playing this big lordship role inside of the Shadow Realm. If he wasn't conscious, how would he be able to do this? Not to mention, in Moog's boss fight, he basically goes, Honey, I'm coming back to bed, just give me a minute. That is basically the premise of the opening cutscene. We know from the DLC trailer that to enter the DLC, we must touch the withered arm and travel to the realm of shadows. That is basically, in my opinion, what Moog's just doing. It's identical to what we know of how we're going to enter the DLC. So from my point of view, it simply looks like Mikla and Moog are just having a cuppa in the shadow realm. We pop along, Moog's like, oh, fucking hell. It touches the withered arm on the other end, pops out back out here and fights us. I don't think it's necessarily him living inside this cocoon. I think there's a lot going on here, but non-consensual, insane Moog, I don't think it's 100% going on here. Of course, there's going to be a bit of insanity considering he spent all his life underground, chained up, but I don't think it's him talking to himself, putting rings on fingers. I think at the very least, Mikula is on board with this and is consenting to this. Whether Moog is 100% is another story which we will get into now. Most of Moog's life was spent down in the subterranean shunning grounds, along with his brother Morgoth after he was locked down there by his mother, Marika. We know that Moog eventually found the formless mother in the darkness and in his insanity. People always assume that this has nothing to do with Mikula, but I'm going to put forward to you a theory that this has everything to do with Mikula. Mikula's cocoon is found in the Mogwin dynasty. We know from item descriptions that Moog filled the cocoon with a cursed blood. Now, a lot of people always assume this was done of Moog's own volition, but I don't believe this is to be the case. Mikula is known for his use of unallowed gold incantations, more specifically, the bewitching branches. What are the bewitching branches? The bewitching branches take over the minds of those around you and wills them into your side, wills them to your will. A good example of this is the suicide bombers inside the Halig tree, fanatical soldiers who will literally kill themselves, blow themselves up, just at the chance of killing you. Sad part being, they never actually had a choice. They were always going to die in this way because Mikula willed it as such. I believe this is exactly the case as with Moog. He is fanatical as shit and he seems to think he's doing everything of his own volition when in reality, I believe Mikula is pulling the strings. If this is the case, this has massive implications for the DLC. Hell, Moogwin's dynasty might be in full swing inside of the Shadow Realm we see multiple characters inside the Shadow Realm in the DLC trailer. Don't you think it's a bit peculiar that they're all in there? Now, assuming they're not all tarnished, they're going to need food sources, water, all the bare necessities for civilization and life to thrive. I find it very hard to believe that in these circumstances and in the state that the Shadow Realm is in, that there isn't some kind of civilization there, Mogwin's dynasty or not. It also mentions that there's a war going on inside this realm. So that also suggests there's at least two civilizations. These two civilizations perhaps being the Mogwin dynasty, Mog and Mikula, 
and Mesmer's army that we know little about. But if Mesmer has an army, then that suggests that he's got a civilization. I honestly can't even begin to tell you all how hyped I am for this DLC. It's going to be so bloody good. Not to mention, a guy in the trailer says, aren't you too curious to know just what kind Mikola is doing here? Which further reinforces what we were talking about just in regards to the Mogwin dynasty possibly getting up to stuff inside the Shadow Realm. Just before we get on to the secret that I'm sure you've been waiting for patiently, I just wanted to say, if you are enjoying this video, you don't have to do it right now, but at the end of the video, if you find you have enjoyed it, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe, as it greatly and utterly helps the channel, and it helps me to know that you are enjoying this style of content, as I just want to promote and make as good a content as I possibly can for you all. Consort ship plays a massive role inside of Elden Ring, and Mikola and Moog are no exception. Moog touches a ring upon Mikola's finger inside his boss arena, and you can later find this ring on Mikola's withered arm outside of the boss arena once you've killed Moog. I thought this was kind of strange. What is the significance of this ring? And I think I found it. The ring actually looks to be like roots curled upon Mikola's finger. More specifically, tree roots. What is the significance of this? Well, a massive focal point of the DLC is this Shadow Realm tree. What is the Shadow Realm tree? Well, it seems to be some kind of shadow of the Earth tree. Uh -huh. Not sure who first discovered this, but a while back someone made the discovery that it's actually two trees wrapping around each other. This seems to be exactly what's going on with Mikola. Mikola is this one tree, and then they've got this other tree wrapped around the finger of the other tree. Metaphorically, you could see Mikola as a tree. He's a beacon for a lot of life, and a lot of things stem back to Mikola. Now, you could just stem this up to a design choice. A really cool, neat reference that some people will get some point down the line. From Software's done that multiple times. But I think there's a lot more to this than just that. Now, I'm not saying that Mikola is the source of the Shadow Realm, as that's just not true. We've been told directly that... Marika is from the Shadow Realms. That predates Mikola, so there's no chance that he can be the source of it. There's also where Mesma Carter plays into this whole situation. I really do believe that Mesma is in fact the first child of Marika and Radigan. We know that Marika has an unwanted child, as we hear this from a spirit in the Lands Between. I think this is Mesma. I just do. I have a feeling. And I do believe from everything we see that Mesmer is probably a lot older than Mikola. Not to mention the fact that Mesmer seems to have been there a lot longer than Mikola. So if Mesmer predates Mikola, but Mikola's the source of the Shadow Realm, but Mesmer's been there possibly before Mikola was even born. Mm. I really don't think Mikola is going to be the source of the Shadow Realm. But hey, prove me wrong from software, I dare you. There's a lot of ways this could go. But I'm going to tell you my opinion and how I think it's going to go. I implore you to take what you want from this video and to come to your own conclusions of what this could mean. As From Software is so good at storytelling, it's basically impossible to 100% pinpoint what is actually going to happen. I believe this was a ritual to get into the Shadow Realm. Mikula is ripped from his cocoon where he's cocooning into a full-fledged god. He's ripped from there and put in this other cocoon, or perhaps the same cocoon, but it's split open. And then said cocoon is drenched with accursed blood. This is already looking really ritualistic as is. A ring that seems to be made up of roots, or perhaps a part of a tree, a great tree, is then put onto Mikola's finger. I don't think this is actually the shadow of the Erd tree. tree. I think it's probably from either the Heilig tree, or more likely... I think it might actually be from the Erd Tree. The ring seems to very heavily resemble Radagon's impenetrable thorns, which block you from going into the Erd Tree after Morgoth's boss fights. This has so many implications, considering Radagon is Mikola's father, which then adds even more credibility. We know that they were close, so is it so far-fetched to think that maybe Radagon helped out Mikola? Or that Mikola would have access to these impenetrable thorns where he could then tell Moog where they are, Moog created, and then they could mimic the legends of the Shadow Realm. Something that has a little bit less evidence, but I'm also really gunning for, is the fact that maybe the Formless Mother has a bigger role in this than we originally thought. The Formless Mother whispered into Moog's ear, 
but what if the former's mother was already in cohorts with Mikola before this even occurred? What if the former's mother was the one who told Mikola about his mother's past, told him about the legends of the Shadow Realm, and told him how to perform this ritual? It would make so much sense, considering as well that the blood is also needed for this ritual. I would not be surprised if we find out in the DLC that Marika wasn't the only thing on that fateful day that crossed over into the lands between from the Shadow Realm. That was honestly such an amazing video to make. I absolutely love talking about Elden Ring and it's honestly the highlight of my week. Coming on here, loading up Final Cut, just recording, talking to you all, editing. I absolutely love it and it's such a pleasure that I can do this for you all. So thank you all for that. I do just want to say, because I know when I do these kind of videos, some people get a bit annoyed by them. This is my opinions and these are the conclusions I've come to. If you have different conclusions, that is perfectly a-okay and I think that's better to be honest so we can cover all bases and perhaps get to what actually might be the truth. Anyway, I'm not going to hold you any longer. I really do hope you have a great rest of your day. Don't you dare go hollow. And may you find your worth in the waking world. Goodbye, everyone.